Let's spend some time looking at package management within Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. There are a number of methods to manage packages on your system, one of which is RPM, which we'll be looking at in this particular area. So let's label this section package management with RPM. This is the traditional means of managing packages within Red Hat Linux and is still supported, although seemingly being deprecated, but nonetheless, it's still a useful means of managing packages on your system. Now, a number of features are provided by RPM, including compression of packages, which means the full size of a package is not reflected during transit or on the storage medium, such as a CD or DVD, meaning that during installation, a package is decompressed on the fly and the full size is reflected on your system. So during transit, whether across the internet or via storage medium, the full size of the package is not realized or reflected, which is a good thing, which means you can stuff more packages onto a particular medium or transfer across the internet in a more timely fashion. So compression is inherent, has always been, and continues to be. Currently, they're using the XC lossless compression technique, which is faster on the decompression side and provides superior compression to the prior method. In addition, packages are signed with a strong SHA-256 hash. So SHA-256 hashes are used to sign packages, which differs from Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5, which is why the RPM versions are not compatible. However, it's good to know that the packages are signed with a longer string or a longer or greater bit length rendering a more secure package as a consequence. So when you confirm your SHA-256 strings using any of the verification techniques, you know that you're basing your confirmation on 256 bits of a particular algorithm, in this case SHA. RPM maintains a database in varlib RPM. This is where it stores information that it tracks such as the packages that are installed on your system, so it tracks installed packages, as well as attributes of the various packages and the corresponding files, etc. So the database is used to track all of this information, just exactly what is installed on the system and all of the files associated with those packages and attributes associated with the contained files so that you can perform proper verifications. And we'll show you some examples of verifications momentarily. RPM operates in five modes. So five modes of operation. And they include installation mode, which is perhaps the most natural to understand and appreciate because it allows you to install packages, RPMs, on your system, providing, of course, the supplier of your application supplies RPMs. Not all suppliers provide RPMs. However, the platform is readily open and anyone can roll their packages, let's say their traditional tar -GZ images as RPM files. So you can install packages. Conversely, you may uninstall packages you may also upgrade. You may query the database as well as files on the file system. And you may also verify packages, which allows us to determine whether or not there are discrepancies between the RPM database's view of the file and or file system and packages and what's actually there on the file system. So for example, supposing you have LFTP installed and one of its key files, let's say the binary file has been usurped. Using the verification technique of RPM, you could determine whether or not the signatures match. So the version of LFTP on the file system may differ from 
the signature provided in the RPM database, which would reflect some sort of tampering or discrepancy that's worthy of investigation. So you have a means of determining whether or not the integrity of your system is sound or reflects your pristine state. So these are the five modes of operation. Now let's just note as another feature and as also a caveat that RPM does not automatically resolve dependencies. And for that you should use yum which we'll be looking at as well to resolve dependencies. So for example, supposing you wanted to install let's say a package that requires many x.org and gnome libraries. By default if you attempt to use RPM to install that package using either the install or the upgrade option, RPM will complain that there are unmet dependencies but it will prov provide no course of action to rectify those discrepancies. So that's one of the downsides of using RPM and that is you're not able to automatically resolve dependencies which will relegate you to using another tool such as yum or perhaps resolving manually the dependencies which can be quite time consuming to say the least. So let's march through the various modes of operation. So the first mode we'll explore is the query mode. This is a natural mode to explore because a number of packages have been installed post-installation or as a consequence. So that means there's a lot that we can query without compounding matters even more, meaning installing more packages. So it's a good thing to start by querying what exists on the system. We often reference throughout our studies RPM query all. This is a simple command Q is query that enters query mode, A means all, which instructs RPM to dump all of the packages that it knows of that have been installed on the system. So dumps all installed packages. And by packages we mean RPMs, not third-party non-RPMs such as TarGZ or TarBZ2 images. Those sorts of programs will not be tracked by RPM. Let's just note that as well. Six, another caveat, RPM does not track non-RPM programs or apps, i.e. programs that are named star.tar.gz or star.tar.bz2 etc. So if you obtain packages of those forms RPM will not track them. So long as you have a means of keeping track of them that's okay as well because there are a number of packages that are available online open source that provide no RPMs. But since RPM targets one of the major Linux platforms you'll more than likely find an RPM for your particular platform, Enterprise 5, 4, 3, 6, SUSE, or perhaps Debian packages, or Ubuntu packages, which are one and the same. So with that said, Query All will allow us to enumerate what's on the system. Now it helps to use Query All in conjunction with grep or less in search of specific packages. Now you need not be the root user to run Query All. Any user can query the list of packages installed on the system. When you query all, all of the packages are dumped, their names. The names always include the platform, and they're tied to the platform on which they're installed. So our system's 32-bit x86, and as a consequence, the packages are 686 packages, as opposed to x86 underscore 64 for 64-bit packages. This dump ran by pretty quickly, so we're not able to take full advantage of the output. If we pipe the output into less, for example, we'll see one page full at a time. It's currently not sorted alphabetically, but these are indeed the packages. These are RPMs that were installed from the original media, across the wire, or from DVD. 
So query all dumps the packages. Using conjunction with grep makes it a little bit more useful. So supposing you're in search of, let's say, the package that contains grep, which happens to be named grep. You can grep the entire dump in search of grep. You now know that grep is owned by the package named grep. Now let's take this package name and analyze it briefly just so that you have a sense for what is standard within RPM packages. So as another example, we did RPM query all grep grep. And this returned the following. So this package owns grep. Now when you see a package, its name resembles the following. To the left of all the numbers and platform information is the unique name of the package. So this is the unique name of the package. To the right of the unique name of the package is version specific information. So this is version 263 minor 2 for EL6 I686. So in this name there's a lot of information. Grep tells us main name of package 2.6 dot three dash two package version and el6 dot i686 includes two pieces of information let's just include an extra six including the version of red hat so red hat version and platform in our case i686 which means 32-bit so that is how you are to parse package names when you see them. This becomes important because as you attempt to get more information about packages, you'll invariably reference the main name of the package and not the version information, which follows everything to the right of the hyphen. So wanting to find out more information about grep, you just specify grep in your RPM query searches. So let's extend this a bit. So RPM query, now instead of querying the entire database, which could be hundreds or is hundreds of packages, and in fact, let's just confirm it, RPM query all, pipe the output into the word count utility, and then list the number of lines returned, and there are 1,151 packages. So instead of enumerating through all 1,151, we'll simply query directly the grep package. Now, it's not enough to just query. You need to tell the query what to do. So you're either going to query all or you're going to query specific things. For example, supposing you wanted metadata about the package grep. RPM query I followed by grep, which is the main name of the package, will return that metadata. So returns metadata about grep package. The metadata contain information such as the name of the package, the version, the platform, the system on which it was compiled, whether or not it has a signature associated with it, a description, and so on. So it tells you about the package, useful information about the package. Let's try this, and you don't need to be root in order to find out information about installed packages, because this is considered to be information that is not harmful. So RPM with the query I option for installed packages shows us information we've mentioned. This is the main name of the package. This is the version. This is the release 2.el6 for the platform EL6. It was installed on this particular date. That's when the system was installed. It belongs to a group named applications slash text. This is its size. So this appears to be 786,869 bytes. How it's licensed, the source RPM from which it came, the build host, when it was built, the vendor of the package. In this case, it's one of the source packages from Red Hat, not from a third party. The signature associated with the package. Key ID GPG is used to sign the packages. The packager. URL information about the package so you can learn more about it. It's a GNU program. And a summary and description as mentioned. So query information 